Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Friday Night Live. The both guests in person here and also the viewers online. Thank you very much for taking your time. Every month, um, we host Friday, Friday Night Live here. The every, Friday, every Friday Night Live is very, very special for us and for me. But tonight is exceptional. The first of all, uh, we are almost coming back from the pandemic. Of course, now we are wearing a mask, but uh, uh, when we see the, all those numbers, the New York City is coming back. So this is a great celebration for that. But uh, to me, tonight's Friday Night Live is, I, can come, I cannot come up with uh, the better words than my dreams come to here. Because I grew up in the countryside of Nagasaki, then when I was a middle school student, I started to listen to rock music and folk rock and those things. Then high school, I fell in love with jazz music. Then all those big names. Among those names, Toshiko Akiyoshi and Lou Tabakin, big band. But a very, very special name. It's actually the only Japanese, the only Japanese name I, that I knew at that time. Then that was my high school days. Then today, I'm over 60. Finally, I have a chance to host this Lou Tabakin and Toshiko Akiyoshi here tonight. So this is just wow. My dreams come true kind of night tonight. And so I would like to uh, introduce those uh, Toshiko Akiyoshi-san and Lou Tabakin-san and three great musicians. The first of all, first, on bass, Jason Tiemann. Jason, please. <laughs> Welcome. He's a great technician. He played with many great jazz giants like Benny Golson. And also, obviously, he played with Yamaha drums. <laughs> it's a great ambassador from, from Japan in that sense. And also, he's a great educator. Uh, he teaches at the uh, uh, University of Hartford. And actually, I st studied at the Wesleyan, close to Hartford. So I feel like the yeah, meeting with all the friends. So thank you very much for joining us tonight. And on bass, uh, Mr. Boris Kozlov, please. <laughs> Boris is a legendary bass player on wood bass and electric. And he participated in three Grammy Award winning records and also other 160 albums. And also, he's co leader of the famous jazz quartet called Opus 5. And also, when, talk, when we talk about the jazz bass, the legend is Charles Mingus. He inherited the Mingus Big Band as a music director for 22 years. Such amazing bass prayer. Thank you so much for coming tonight. And tonight, this is a concert general of Japan. So we need to have some sort of a flavor of Japan. So we have Sumie Kaneko san. <laughs> On Koto. Very traditional Japanese instruments. Should I, should I say like a Japanese harp or something? The many strings and the beautiful sounds. And this and those music and true East meets West kind of music. Thank you very much. And talking about Kaneko-san, uh, she plays uh, with many uh, great musicians across the genre, not only 
a jazz or traditional music or classical music, like a yo yo ma and other great musicians. And also, she has lectured at Harvard University on the music and other social issues. Thank you very much for joining tonight. And here, tonight's master is Mr. Lou Tabakin. I, uh, I had a great pleasure to, to meet with him uh, when I got here, but this is my first time to introduce his name here. So this gives me a great joy. And as you know, uh, Lu-san came from Philadelphia, the capital of jazz music and classical music, and he did many great things. And he's, I think, the living dictionary of the development of jazz music. He played, he played with uh, Donald Bird, no, no Donald, Donald Bird, right? Uh, Donald, uh, you played with uh, many too great many, musicians. Too, too, many, too, too many, too many, too many, too many. <laughs> thing. yeah. Thank you very much. And also, he fell in love with the Japanese music. And I have a one CD called the uh, Tanuki's Night Out. That is a Shoujoji no Tanuki-san. But he arranged it for jazz music. And he played flute tonight. But sounds like a shakuhachi of the Japanese, uh, Japanese bamboo flute. So the true bridge between Japan and the United States, both in music and also in person, too, because his wife is Toshiko Akiyoshi-san. Please. <laughs> and talking a little bit about uh, Tosh uh, Toshiko-san, she has got here. Uh, 14 Grammy Award nomination, and she's the first Japanese jazz musician to be inducted at the International Jazz Hall of Fame. And also, uh, she was bestowed on the Order of Rising Sun with Gold Ray by the name of the Emperor of Japan. And also, uh, she, became the, uh, she was named as Jazz Master by the U.S. National Endowment for the Arts. Very high honor. And when I started to listen to jazz music, I still remember the, uh, the sounds of Minamata. And also, she composed music for Hiroshima. So her music, beyond just the music, she's, she has true impact on the society and people and people's mind. So I think I talk too much. Just like Miles Davis said, music will speak for itself. So please enjoy great music tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, young Rochi-san. I remember our phone call. It was during the pandemic, and nothing was happening, and I, and I said, maybe I can do the Friday night at, at the, uh, your residence. I thought it might be a nice idea. I was rehearsing with some guys, and so I, I mentioned it, and, and then it developed into something else, basically. Well, you think Toshigo would, might, might do it? I said, well, I will ask her. And she said, of course. And then we said, maybe one, one more Nihonjin to present. <laughs> so I was thinking, and I thought of Sumie, because I did one little thing with her. She was, actually, she played shamisen on this one little uh, event. Anyway, she was okay, to, able to make it. So here we are. Now we have a big special event. And the first tune that uh, my trio will be playing is an original composition. It's called Garden at Lifetime. It was written uh, for a garden, the last shogun's garden in Shizuoka. And there's a jazz club called Lifetime. And anyway, I recorded this tune. And 
and the owner was so excited, he built a nose stage outdoor across the koi pond, and we, we opened it. And I got to play, got involved in playing, uh, improvising some music for Hagaromo. Anyway, so it's, this is our special arrangement called Garden at Lifetime.
Thank you very much. We, uh, <laughs> Boris and I have been working on this for quite a while, and it keeps on evolving, you know, and you never know what will actually happen, but it's, a fun, it's fun to play, and the association with uh, She's a Woke uh, is very strong. Anyway, uh, Kubota-san is the owner of Lifetime, and he's actually had other musicians write pieces for his garden, but mine is the best. <laughs> Don't you think so? I have a copy of the, so European composer wrote this beautiful manuscript. He wrote this uh, composition for Fugetsuro. Anyway, now is the time for Sumie. I was asking her to write, uh, write a piece f for flute and koto, and she never did it. <laughs> and so when this project came up, I said, OK, Sumie, now's the chance to do it. And just got it two days ago, so <laughs> hopefully will make something happen, and I'm sure something will, something will happen. Anyway, Sumie Kaneko, dozo.
Thank you.
Thank you, Sue Mien. Now the pe now the piece is written and we played it, <laughs> and now we can perfect it. We come back next year and play it again, and see <laughs> see the progress we made. And we thank you very much. Arigato. Now the big moment you all have been waiting for. Toshiko Akiyoshi will. It's your turn. Oh no no. Shut the mouth, could have said. I made a mistake. Yeah, one more. I have jet lag. I just got back from Europe. So forgive me if I make some mistakes. It's an excuse to make a mistake. Anyway, this is, okay, this is the big moment. In my first time in Japan was 1970, Expo 70. I went there with Toshiko, it was my first experience. 1971, I had a little time travel around and I became infatuated with the tanuki because I kind of felt maybe we were related somehow <laughs> and first thing I did I, I bought one I bought a pretty big tanuki and carried it home in those days you could do stuff like that on the airlines and it's still in my house and I have a tanuki collection but anyway <laughs> I decided to write a, a little fantasy a little scenario about the adventures of a certain tanuki. Kind of a nice one. Not a, some tanuki are not so cool. But this guy was fine. And he, he's in the mountains. And he decides that he wants to have some sake. And he wants to meet a Jose. And so he's planning this. And he goes into the village, drinks a lot, has a lot of fun. And all of a sudden, he loses his power. And the money that he was using turns into leaves, and his tail starts to come out, and people chase him back into the mountains. And there he goes, and he's kind of sad. Then he starts thinking about the next time he will come in. So that's my tanuki narrative, so to speak. So uh, that's another piece that keeps ev evolving. So I hope nobody's offended by this, uh, our little bit, our little narrative here. Anyway, dozo.
Thank you very much. That's the uh, Tanuki story. And many, most gaijin don't know about Tanuki, except when they see Tanuki furs, which is not Tanuki, it's raccoon. Anyway, so that's our little attempt at portraying the Tanuki. Now is the big moment. Toshiko Akiyoshi will play. Now is the time.
Is this a working? Okay. <laughs> uh, the tune I am going to play, it is a quite old tune. It's Tsuki uh, no Sabaku. It's kind of like a desert, moon over desert, something like that. And uh, we don't have a desert. Uh, this is written before my time, so you know how long that is. And it's about, in Japan in those days, I think it's more lesser people than today, and meaning more greens. We have a, a lot of beautiful uh, trees and a mountain and so on and so on. And uh, these two people was a lyricist and a an, uh, writer, music writer. Uh, they are dreaming about a desert uh, we don't have. I think we always dream about something we don't have, no matter how uh, blessed you, you are. Uh, I think it's just the desert people, they wish they had a lot of tree, probably, you know. But anyway, so uh, as I said, this is written before my time, but Everyone knows it. And then I ask somebody in the 20s, young person, do you know? Oh, yes, yes. So the, 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 uh, one of those tunes that uh, everyone knows in Japan is called Tsuki no Sabak.
Eu chegou aqui, eu te... <laughs> Yellow. This is a political piece and a, a kind of a political statement because, you know, you heard the phrase, black is beautiful. And if you run into Thelonious Monk, the first thing he would say is, white is right. So this is Toshiko's yellow is mellow. However, it, yellow is not always mellow. Sometimes. What do you think about that, Sumie? <laughs> Sometimes it's mellow, usually mellow. But this is yellow is mellow. Toshiko wanted to say that. Now she said it. Daijobu. Okay.
Tosca's ready to leave. No, one more, two more. <laughs> anyway, this next composition of Tosca Goes requires a little explanation. In the 19th, late 70s, we were in the recording studio recording my first flute-only album. And the idea was to record C in the springtime, Haru no Me. So Tusco had a special arrangement of that, and we recorded it, some really nice long solos. It was about 10 or 11 minutes long. And all of a sudden, found out from the Miyagi estate, they said, Dame, you can't do it. You can only play it the original way. Kind of stupid, but that's what they said. So we couldn't use it. But meanwhile, we had this long, lots of music. We had 11 minutes of music. So Tosco said, well, she wrote another theme on top of the Haru no Ome theme because she could do it, you know, one note leak, but you could cover it. And so we created, she created a new, new piece called Aki no Ome, Autumn, Autumn Sea. So now Miyagi Estate lost a few dollars in royalties <laughs> and we can't. We have a nice new composition. So this is Autumn Sea. I was playing uh, the other day. I had a request to play Autumn Nocturne, and I looked it up on the dictionary. I tried to find out the Japanese word. I knew that autumn is Aki, and nocturne came out to be Noctan. So Aki Noctan. It's not what I expected. some water.
Boris Kozlov, Toshiko Akiyoshi. Thank you. We really enjoyed playing for you this, this afternoon. And we prepared an encore. We were, we were, we were presumptuous enough to prepare an encore. Usually people go nuts and you play an encore. <laughs> Nobody went nuts, but we're going to play an encore anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, this is like uh, a little jam session kind of champon, champon uh, little tune, a kind of a. Okay, I have to talk a little bit. I can tell I can tell my uh, joke, my guitar tuning joke. If you want to hear it, no, I won't. T I won't tell it. This is uh, this is a little piece I I dedicated to Kanji San because he's like of all the ambassadors I I've, I've been through quite a few here, and he's the most uh, supportive, most energetic the most dedicated of all. So, arigato, thank you very much.
çalışacağız. Çok zor.
And with that, tonight's concert will come to a close. We would like to once again thank our amazing performers, uh, Toshiko Akiyoshi-san, <laughs> Lou Tabakin, <laughs> Boris Kozlov, <laughs> Jason Tiemann, and Sumie Kaneko for coming out tonight to give us such a wonderful performance. To all of our supporters, thank you for attending tonight's event and for your continuing support of the Friday Night Live series. Our next concert will be on December 10th, starting at 5 p.m., and will feature an incredible classical music trio. So be sure to follow us on social media for any updates so you don't miss out on a wonderful evening. We wish you all a good night and hope to see you next time. Thank you.